Welcome back in. Hope you all got your snacks. I know I did. I know Sam did. And we are back here getting ready for the second game of the day. Cloud9 Academy up against Immortals Academy. Should be an exciting match this time around. We had a lot of excitement last time. This time we're towards the top of the standings. We're fighting for the coveted top spot to try to see if they can contest against Team Liquid Academy, who currently sit undefeated. Honestly, they have been playing incredibly well, Cloud9 Academy. I'm excited to see what they can do this season, just because every time we see them play Magical, I feel like they get better and better, but they maintain their same chaotic style where they just come out on top no matter how it goes in the early to mid. Once you can see this game right here, it's got the chaos going on, and they're shot on this Gangplank getting this early lead that honestly was surprising to see just because Gangplank getting an early lead is never something you want to see. But the fact that then afterwards, they kind of falter in the early game. And that seems to be a trend, as we've talked about before, for Cloud9 Academy, where they have these hiccups when it comes to the early to mid game. But then they group up together as a team around these objectives, and they find these amazing flanks and these amazing positional plays that catch everyone off guard. Honestly, it was that final play when Darshan was able to get the final push. You can see down bot, although yep. Golden Guardians Academy Are yesterday were ready, taking kids? Baron, you could see the captain just getting ready to fire the cannons, and he was getting turrets, he was getting inhibitors, and he's ultimately the one that won them the game. Yes, he didn't get the final kill. Yes, he died at the end. But he's just been incredible this entire season. Yes. I'm sad you didn't follow up my uh, Are You Ready Kids with I.I. Captain. Not going to do it. I mean, you did give Not the captain at least, but I was really hoping nope. you'd give the... But it doesn't matter, because either way, it still was a dominant performance coming in from Darshan. You can even see here, looks like he's getting picked off. And what do they do? They say, oh, hey! That's an open nexus. Uh, why don't we just double TP and win? Honestly, it looked so bad for Cloud9 the entire time, but Darshan and the rest of the team just playing well, knowing what their win conditions were, and getting that bot side inhibitor just won them the game. Incredible play. We'll Hopefully we'll see something game like crazy that, today. Do you, think, do you think it's going to happen again? Do I think that's going to happen today. again specifically? Today. I, I think it's going to be tough. I think Immortals Academy is a different right. type of team. They're not going to have those openings, and you're going to have to play dirty with them if you want to get those fight wins. Yeah, and Immortals Academy are a team that have been looking pretty solid throughout this. Well, yesterday, going up against the undefeated team, Liquid Academy, and Tapoon having a difficult time being able to secure that kill against Jenkins, who was able to kite this out so immaculately. It's one of those things where just the small hiccups that ended up spelling doom for them. They still played it very strong into a strong team. To the undefeated team that sits currently, you know, they're looking number one, looking like no one's going to be able to really stop them. But now they go up against uh, Cloud9 Academy, another team that's sitting towards the top, sitting at four and one, and they have to play two tough teams back to back, which isn't always the easiest, but they still somehow manage to look like they might have these ways back in. And you can even see from this Baron fight where I think it just... Uh, was a good smite coming in from Armao to really focus down that then afterwards Immortals were just a little too late to fight. It was a really back and forth game and Immortals, uh, as you kept saying, Magical, put up a really great fight. They got some picks every now and again they lost them, but the good news is today they're against Darshan and Darshan don't play those Moonstormer newer tots. He's gonna fight. Yeah, he gonna fight, but who knows? Maybe that might not be so good for the side of Immortals. Maybe fighting too much might be uh, even more difficult, but at the same time I want to talk about the strengths of, T uh, Immor of uh, Immortals Academy, where they really try to play around, and it's really around that bot lane. Keith and Joey have been absolute terrors in the bot lane. Hell, for the team themselves, have the highest kill participation, which is kind of unusual. Usually, you know, you see it more around the jungle, sometimes the mid laner, sometimes the support, but it's both Keith and Joey that are the number one and two for the team for kill participation, showing that Potluck and Pretty play around the bot lane. The strength is getting Keith ahead. And honestly, in today's game, that's not only going to be a factor, but also getting pretty ahead because he's been playing pretty well. Did, did I say it? I said it. And that's one of the things that Coffee's going like to have to deal with. that's going to happen a lot today. <laughs> Get ready for it, folks. Yeah, that's right, chat. Be sure to shout it out every time it All happens. All right, who's but... got the drinking game going on? Well, well, drinking water, hopefully, because it's good to stay hydrated. Pretty versus Copy is a matchup I'm looking forward to. There or it is. Bud Light. Great. You got to drink Bud Light, man. You had a, I gave you another setup for that one, and you failed me again. You know, Magical, it's just good to be back. I'm just happy to be casting <laughs> with you, even if we don't have each other's, finish each other's... Pancakes? Yep, you got it. Absolutely. Okay. But, you know, that's the synergy that we've built up over all these years at Cloud9. But, you know, Cloud9's playing today. We are casting them, and they are fighting Immortals. It's going to be a good one.
it will be a really exciting to see how these two teams are going to be able to go up against one another because on paper they are very similar Tapoon, even though he hasn't had the strongest performances i mean there's also recently by recency bias just looking yesterday he's still been a strong top laner tarshan as well being a strong top laner uh Schoenfire, pot like both trying to see if they can facilitate the teams find the strengths Pretty Coffee, both trying to rotate around the map. Strength and bot lane of King and Isles up against Keith and Joey. It's very similar on paper, and that makes me wonder how they're going to be able to beat one another. Where's really going to be the strength that lies for either team? Well, you know how Cloud9's going to play this. They're going to go for scrappy mid-game mid fights. They're going to go the 5v5s all the time. They're going to go for the 4-1s eventually if they put Darshan on that carry. But on the other side of Immortals, I feel like they're going to go for more of that 5v5 style. They're going to go for cleaner fights. They're going to go for early game advantages because they know that's where Cloud9 falters. And they know that Pretty Keith and Tapoon are definitely up to the task of beating their counterparts. And so before we hop into Champion Select, it's going to be interesting to see because we've been seeing a shift in the meta lately where it hasn't been so much around trying to get i mean, sure pantheon is pretty much permanent ban same with seraphine but we're starting to see new things creep up and gnar has been one of the big ones that i've been noticing and top Poon has played mostly gnar this split four games of it in fact only playing one not on gnar and that was gragasi even though they did win that game it's mostly been about gnar well you look at darshan on the other side he's got a Jax game which is really cool to see unfortunately not getting the win but the get, uh, Gangplank and the Camille's have been coming up as well. Camille was something that was already pretty strong, but seeing more Gangplank is something that really fits in with what Cloud9 wants to be able to do, which is, sure, you know, they might throw a little bit at the mid game, but it's win late. I think it really comes down to what the pick strategy is, because that Jax game you mentioned specific into the Camille. If Tapoon manages to get that, then that's what they're going to play. I think Darshan's pretty competent on Jax, but otherwise... It comes down to how they want to play the game, because usually they want to put Darshan on that island. They know that he's a fighter player. He loves playing the duelist. He loves playing Gangplank especially, and will succeed with that. The question is, are they going to be confident into the Gangplank versus Gnar matchup, as you were just talking about? And are Immortals going to put Keith onto Jin for a fifth time? Because as we haven't talked about, he has played it four times. The pattern is there. Look it up. Illuminati. Yep. It's all a conspiracy. Well, no, now they can't play Jin. That's that's no, the thing. Right. Because it's the fourth, they've already played Jin four times. They're not allowed. Or, or it doesn't count because it doesn't count because they've only won three times with the Jin. I mean, we'll have to find out if we're in once we get into champions. Like, that's the only way to really find out how this is all going to go if you want to make your, your squares and your circles or hexagons, whatever the Illuminati symbol is. I'm not really sure. It's hard to say because they change it all the time. Yeah, all the time. So. You know what? I think we're ready. I think we're ready to get into Champions you like so? Sam. I know I'm ready. I think you're ready. The viewers out there are ready. They're done, of, done with us just talking about other things. They want us to be able to talk about the game at hand. Cloud9 Academy, Immortals Academy, and how they're going to be able to pick one another apart here in the draft. As we see, it's Gangplank <laughs> immediately banned. No hesitation. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely no questions there. They saw the game yesterday. They, they know what can happen when Darshan gets that pick. Hecarim and Olaf banned away. Just the standard jungles. You got to make sure they're not there. Pantheon, as we talked about. Talia has been getting through every now and again. I still feel like it's going to be banned away in this phase just to make sure that everything's Ooh. gone. And Seraphine as well. Making sure King can't play that because he has played it before and they're more than happy to do that on Cloud9, even if King is more of a carry type player. So this is what I was wondering. They ban Udyr instead of banning Talia. There is a shared champion pool between the two of them, Potluck and Shurnfire. And I was wondering if Cloud9 were going to try to say, you know, we'll we'll trade. We'll trade Talia for something else. And that's something I'm a bit surprised. I expected the Udyr to be the thing that they let through, not this Talia, since it has such a uh, great early game wave clear and can really try to see if they can make those plays early on into the bot lane. Now, the question is, what do you counter that with? Because Twist Fate looks like it's going to be the lock-in, but I was thinking about the top side, where you have to think about Camille being open. You could combo that with the Galio, which is open, still reasonably good on 11.2, but you could combine that with the Nocturne as well, who is an available jungler, not played as often. I don't know how confident Shurnfire is on that pick, but it is available, and I think that would be a pretty good combination into the Talia, who's looking to get the global pressure and those early ganks. The only problem with that Nocturne is that you do want to be able to get level 6. Well, Talia mm. is going to be strong before level 6. So how fast she can rotate around with her passive, as well as the amount of damage she can unleash. And 
you mentioned the Camille. Tapoon grabbing that already, trying to take that away, which makes me oh. wonder, are we going to see Darshan back mm. onto that Jax? Mm. Okay, so, yep, we did talk about the counter matchup, and we also talked about this combination, just the simple wombo combo of Camille and Galio going to be coming through with the Talia. Mm. I'm excited to see that. Renekton, the hover so far, I there feel is. like that's going to be a relatively even matchup for Darshan. He's going to feel confident with it. <laughs> But can they deal with Disengage? Because this team of Misfortune and Twisted Fate, not great at peeling away from something like a Talia, like a Camille. It's going to be pretty rough unless they Cloud9 Academy can round this off with a little bit more of a Disengage style support. And as they get into the second part of Band, I'm kind of waiting it out. They're not exactly sure. They take away Kaisa. I'm wondering okay. if Jin is also going to be banned. Try to take away some of the power from Keith, where he feels like he can really win out in that laning phase. You utilize the, the strength of Jin with Joey also being someone who plays so aggressively. Try to play in their face, since you already have Cloud9 with that Renekton into the Camille, where normally it's about this Renekton trying to win early. So this is where I'm also wondering what the Shurnfire grab for the jungle. You grab something that's going to be able to help out early on, or you're trying to get some scaling. With Kindred being banned, it makes me wonder if Graves is also going to follow suit. Graves could very well be the next ban, but looking at the other side, I do like the Kaisa ban. Again, just making sure Keith doesn't get the strongest AD carry in the meta right now, because honestly, anytime we see a Kaisa, she's just the marksman that's making the greatest amount of difference in any fight. She's able to kite around, and Lucian going to be the next one. Probably right. more of a... I guess that is a Keith ban because Galio can be flexed around, but interesting choices coming out of Cloud9 Academy. So, Nidalee, you're going to be joining Kindred on the bench from Immortals, trying to see if they can take away some of that early game pressure. Echo being hovered. Now, Echo as a jungle is not something that we see too often, but he is something that can actually get a good early pressure, especially once he hits level four. Parallel Convergence, when you follow that up with the Time Winder to be able to get a lot of burst damage into these side lanes. But it is interesting to also note that it could potentially be a flex. I mean, I'm, this is like, you know, very, 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 very skeptical of the fact of maybe you send the Twisted Fate into the bot lane with this Misfortune to try to have power that way. And you try to do something weird and wild and crazy, Echo into the mid lane, I, you know, again, this is skeptical because you have Twisted Fate, you have Echo. It's pretty much going to be sure and fire on Echo. I'm just trying to think of something cool and fun here, Sam. Stop judging me. Never. But at the same time, I want to judge Immortals Academy because they have locked in the Senna. They've locked in the Maokai for their bot lane. And the Rel is going to be the final lock-in for Cloud9 Academy. So there is some disengage here, but Cloud9 Academy really do have to play this careful. They have a lot of low range characters and not a whole lot of easy engage especially against something like a galio and like a maokai who can very easily kite the rest of the team away tank that damage and keep senna alive keith is going to be a nightmare if there isn't a focus on him early on in the game right and that is where we'll probably see pot uh, potluck put a lot of potential pressure in with pretty following as well since Good it is going to be that galio mid lane who could always join up with potluck and that fits into how Immortals have consistently played, where they try to see if both Potluck and Gritty are gonna be able to hold hands, go into the side lanes, find pressure, and really get Keith and Joey ahead. It's interesting to see that Joey is going back onto this Maokai support that has kind of fallen to the wayside. A lot of people have kind of forgotten it with a couple of the nerfs that came into Imperial Mandate, but it still does help out a lot, especially for bursty champions such as Potluck or even Keith. Honestly, I'm super excited about this Echo Jungle. We haven't seen it this patch yet, so hopefully we'll be able to get something out of Cloud9 Academy. And let's see if Shurnfire remembers how the steps go, because this used to be quite the pick. Used to be, and even in the preseason, did get a little bit of a flare where people were starting to play it a little bit more, and people were wondering if going into Season 11, he was going to be more of a priority pick. Unfortunately, didn't really make it through too well, but it is something that does pretty much follow in a similar suit, in a similar manner to what Talia and Nidalee do. Maybe not quite as aggressive as either of them, but he does have a lot of good early damage that he can provide for the team, as well as having that lockdown from Peril of Convergence that he started first to try to not only see if he can spot out, but be able to take a lot less damage in his clear to maybe even invade. 
He hopefully has a little bit of invade pressure, not quite as much as you would hope for for the main meta junglers, your Deers, your Olafs, what have you, but you do have the AP damage coming through, and I think that's really why Cloud9 Academy chose this pick, is they needed something that wasn't a Nidalee because it was banned away, and they needed something that could add to the damage pool of King and Copy, who are already doing a little bit of damage, but it's not horrendously consistent, at least early on, and the first damage, very, very low without this Echo. As we see, you know, Fire just taking his blue, kind of needed as Echo Jungle. I kind of want to go and talk about the consistency of both teams when it comes to their team compositions. Mm -hmm. Immortal's composition feels a lot easier to execute, if you ask me. Yes. Before. It's got a pretty st uh, stereotypical front-to-back team fight comp. It's going to be the Maokai being able to engage with how pretty, even though we do see a little bit of a fight in oh. the bot lane onto Keith. Okay. Good aggression came in from Isles. Might force the flash. He holds on to it. Smart call not wanting to give up that sum just yet, but he is going to have to take the long path back to lane. And I like Cloud9's composition because instead of disengage, what they said is we're going to set the 1-3-1. One, one. We're going to have relatively long-range characters in Twisted Fate and Misfortune. And we're going to use the global pressure coming out of that Twisted Fate and Darshan in order yes. to force you away from the 5v5 teamfight. Yes, and that's really what they want to be able to utilize is how can they play around this mid game. But that is also something that have been pretty much the detriment and the weakness for Cloud9 Academy is how they play around these mid game team fights. We need to see them playing proactively, but not getting themselves caught out because this composition is about thriving in the mid, game, getting these leads to then be able to keep snowballing into the late game and not have to worry too much as another fight ensues in the bot lane. It does seem that Joey's going to be able to get out of that one relatively scot-free. But look at Keith, able to get some poke back onto King. So it's getting back and oh. forth. It's pretty even so pretty. far, but topside. Pretty found Shurnfire. They do have Darshan nearby, but they got to be careful. The flash away had to flash that seismic shove would have killed him. Would have been pretty darn close. Shurnfire does have his level three, so at the very least has the ability to get away with his E and might thought about going and didn't. Potluck kind of uh -oh. getting zoned off, but here's the teleport. TP coming in, looking to see if they can find someone. Pretty's pretty fast. Looking to see if the Good girl one. convergence is going to be able to help out. Instead, it's the flash for dodge away. No, there it is. Isaac jumped <gasps> back again. It should be the first blood gifted over to Pretty. He made the play, started off it all well. And he's the one who gets the double buff. And that's the thing about the Echo Jungle is, yeah, it's pretty strong, but unfortunately has a relatively weak early game. You need to watch out for those early plays coming out of Potluck on this Talia, and you need to be able to make sure you can get to level 6, because before that, Echo has a surprising trough of power. That he does. It's one of those things as we take a look at this replay, I kind of expect to see Copy maybe try to go for the flash play on Potluck just to stop Pretty from being able to do this. And Shurnfire just couldn't get away from Pretty and Potluck, who with a single combo have the damage to take out a relatively squishy character. Copy gets out scot-free, but at what cost? And that is going back to the point you were making about Shurnfire on this Echo, where he might have good early damage, but he is susceptible to dying in a play like that. If he can get caught out, he's going to get bursted down. It's mm -hmm. such an easy lockdown from both Pretty and Potluck that they can follow up one another. As long as they get the taunt, immediately Seismic Shove is going to be able to catch out Churnfire before he can really do anything. And with that pressure, it looks like Darshan is going to take the back, or at the very least sit at his turret, as unfortunately for Potluck, did rotate top, wasn't able to get anything from it. And this is going to be pressure to Darshan thus far. Both teleports are down. He's going to be able to walk it out and maybe lose a couple CS, but be fine in the meantime. Looks like after the first backs, everyone's feeling fairly confident. But, you know, it's just going to be this way until a jungler makes a huge play. Potluck, definitely in the driver's seat for now, but we'll have to see what Shurnfire can do. And that's going to be where the onus for this game is. It's on Potluck. How does this Talia continue to rotate around the map? Look at bot lane, how far shoved out. Right now, Keith and Joey are. They're keeping King and Isles forced back towards the turret for the moment, which means that their normal avenue to be able to play around the bot lane isn't available just yet. They're going to have to wait some time. Hell, they might want to be able to instead get Tapoon and Pretty into a position where they're going to be able to TP in and try to make those plays. Tapoon, it's going to be a while, especially since he did go to Ignite instead of the Flash. I didn't mention that earlier, but he really wants to be able to win in this side lane against Darshan and keep finding these fights, but it is still a Camille into Renekton. The first few levels aren't going to be the easiest. No, but at the same time, you know Shurnfire's a little bit behind, will be 
a little late getting to the top side, and therefore you're safe if you're top Un. You know that you can stay under turret, you know you can farm against Darshan, and your six, especially with Potluck, is going to be devastating once Pretty gets involved. Uh, Lux spotted out, but he knew Shurenfire was there. Here comes the ultimatum on Darshan. Heroic Ignite. as well. Nowhere to be able to get out. Flashed away to be able to survive. But look who's here. It's Coffee on the other side. He's trying to see if he can get the top. They're going to be able to get it oh, on Shurenfire. No. Take him down with the Winds of War, but it's top boon is pretty low. Darshan wants to be able to re-engage with Isles nearby. They even have caught away heat, so he's not going to be able to join too easily. They get the knock on a pretty, and Darshan slices him down with Call of the Meat. Man, must have heard Churnfire from miles away because he was just echo located in that fight, able to get found out. Very good play from Potluck and Pretty. You saw Tapoon preparing for that fight. He knew he was going to hit the six early because of Darshan's back, and he knew that he had the damage and support from Pretty because he had also hit six. So a very well done combination coming out from Immortals Academy. Cloud9 Academy once again find themselves behind in the early game. Find themselves uh, behind, but at the same time, keep in mind what just happened in that fight. Who was able to get the gold? While Sharnfire wasn't able to make much of an impact. They still mm -hmm. got a kill onto Darshan, they still got a kill onto Copy, and Isles was there on the perfect time for that rotation. Sure, Pretty now sitting at 2-1, and one, but really, you'll take that. It's the Galio that's got a little bit more gold. You want it to be the Talia, so when you take a look at this fight, like you mentioned, Sharnfire got spotted out immediately, but if you look at the mini-map, who's the first to rotate, of course, it's always going to be copy. Just a freebie gold card there on the potluck. And from there, it's amazing that he was able to get the taunt after the first part of Echo's E. So instead of dashing away, he had to dash into the Galio and give up his own life. Unfortunately, the rotation from the rest of Cloud9 much, much faster, especially coming out of the support. So very, very well played by Cloud9 Academy and Isles, who were able to counter the pressure coming out of Immortals Academy. It's always funny when you you know talk about the supports and you see Keith playing this Senna, but it is yep. the fasting Senna style with Maokai the one to get a lot of the gold. So, of course, you want to be able to have Joey constantly getting more gold to be able to push back in King. Either or, doesn't matter because the play still goes about even. You can see that from the gold. You can see it from the kills. It's not too much of a lead for either team. Just a couple hundred for Cloud9 Academy at the moment. The fact that this Echo isn't doing so hot in the early stages of the game isn't going to look so well when it comes to these mid-game fights that you want to be able to ha not have not only have the Renekton who's going to be able to deal a lot but you need that Echo to do so too since he's got Dark Harvest and got not really as much burst as he would have with an Electrocute you need him to do more and you can see that from this fight as well oh, as no. Copy they focus instead Shurnfire in the middle of it has to try to see if he can dodge away will be able to survive but they realize they needed to punish Copy not Shurnfire we talked about how the mid game is, or the mid lane, I should say, is going to be the important lane to focus if you're both of these teams, because Pretty, when he gets ahead, is a very scary player. And Shurnfire, unfortunately, not up to the task after getting picked early and picked often. At 0 and 2 right now, he's going to start the dragon, maybe even get it just based on Talia's positioning. But Immortals Academy are more than willing to trade this for a Rift Herald. Okay, there it is. Now he's got Smite, <laughs> he's got ult. He's fine. I know, I was just watching, and I'm like, um. Churn fire, don't tell me you have the ult for that. I would have the smite I'm okay with. The the ult is what I was more worried about. But he makes it out alive and once again, Potluck gets something on the other side of the map, so keeping up pace and in terms of golden kills, looking pretty far ahead of this echo. Hopefully we'll be able to complete that mythic pretty soon. We'll also get that extra camp just for luck. Scuttle crab down. And the top side just continues to go back and forth. Darshan always putting pressure onto Tapoon in the waves. You can see how the turret's getting not a whole lot of damage, but it's always on Tapoon's side. It's forcing Camille to have to play under turret. Not really going to be able to tag team with Potluck and Pretty for these aggressive skirmishes. Sure, they have the advantage. They got themselves the Rift Herald. But you still want to be able to have this Camille join in some of these skirmishes soon. TPs are about to come off for both Darshan and Tapoon, so... Imagining a play might happen sooner rather than later. Hopefully sooner, just because you do have a Maokai who's doing pretty darn well. 73 farm for support, not too shabby. And Keith also has reached a pretty strong point. He has the Noon Quiver completed, and although won't compare to King at the moment, will provide a lot of support and will be able to give a pretty darn good team fight at 10 minutes in the game. Shows you how often I've been like a part of the North American Amateur team too. Because I wanted to immediately go drag down and move Senna and 
uh, Maokai. <laughs> I'm like, wait, no, I can't do that. From here. Can't do it. Gonna have to ask the OBS, but you know, sometimes you can't. No, have no, that no. it was more for my sake, so I can compare it. Because you want to have Keith and King still there, because Fasting Senna eventually is going to start getting more gold. But it's just one of those things that you just don't realize. You're just kind of absent-minded, like, oh, I, I can't do that here, can I? Nope, not at all. And you can see the gold differences here. Maokai up an unsurprising 900. You can see that difference being made up by King and Keith, where King is, of course, going to be ahead at this point. And in the mid lane, it's got all the way Galio. I mean, that's just what happens when Hot Pretty luck. gets ahead. Hot luck has Weaver's Wall. Are they going to be able to flash over it? King is going to flash away from it to be able to survive. Getting the flash out of King is going to make it so that just wait a wait a little bit for Potluck. Might not even need to wait for that Weaver's Wall again. You're going to be able to probably get a kill on a Misfortune. And also, Joey used his flash, so not as easy an engage. He still has Nature's Grasp available, but it's going to be a little while until that becomes truly useful, and you're going to wait for the positioning out of King and Isles before you can make the most of that ability. He's copy. He's got to be careful. No flash, though. Good gold card. Got to be able to get away from that Predator Galio. Not really worrying too much, and that's... It's actually kind of nice seeing Predator Galio. It's been a while since I've seen him. I feel like this has been something that's been popping up a lot in the LCS as well as the LCK. It's, it's getting there more, and I always enjoy it. So then this is why, because you can always make these plays. The flash away from Darshan. No, oh, no, Joe. Oh, no. Man, this oh, ain't looking no. good. Not like this. Yeah. As so many members collapsed, Darshan just didn't have a chance there. The combo came out. Once his flash was down, it's over for Renekton. He just has to accept that he's going to die to four members rotating topside. Ask yourself, Sam, what would you do if you saw a massive tree just 20, 30 miles per hour booking it towards you? You know, it's it's a strange state in the game where the massive tree is scary, but I'm more scared of the blade lady because honestly, she comes in, she kind of cut you. I'm just saying, though, like, in real life, if a massive tree True. was running at you 20, 30 miles per hour, you you would not be a happy camper. No. I, I would be shocked and appalled and, quite honestly, a little terrified of the jumper that he's wearing because, honestly, those pajamas, they uh, they add to it. They're not as good as, you know, Pajama Guardian Urgot, which is the best skin no. in the game. But, you know, sometimes you... Uh, can't play everything at once, Magical, and right now Tapoon oh, is playing is Darshan. Familiar. Wait a minute, Darshan. Oh, no, oh, no. no dominance either. No. He's able to heal up a little bit. No. Try to see if they can get the Destiny key, but it's a little too late. Wait. He's alive somehow? What? Tapoon, a lot of how, wait, how did Darshan live? Uh, you know, some fancy footwork, some zoning out of copy, and definitely playing under the turret helped Darshan a lot there. And on the bot side, King manages to pick up a turret simultaneously, so very well done by Cloud9 to keep their top laner alive. And also Immortals, they're keeping the pressure on. They just didn't have anything to show for it that time. I just don't know how Darshan lived there. He didn't even have dominance. Look, sure, no. Call of Meek is going to get you a little bit of health, but I thought for sure he was going to die. Unfortunately, it was just a little miscoordination coming out of Pretty and Tapoon. You saw them push him into that topside brush, but unfortunately, Pretty could only get onto him by using the Justice Punch and staying in turret range, which forced him to not do damage and instead walk out. So Darshan, not a whole lot that he had to do there. He just had the good positioning from the start and was able to outplay that by walking around menacingly. So now you can see how fast people can walk around, especially since we have three total rocket belts in this game. Pretty, <laughs> Copy, Shurenfire all having that. It's weird to see Shurenfire only have that, but I suppose when you don't have too much gold, you do what you can. Also sold the jungle item just because, you know, I don't really need it at this point. Or sorry, it's completed. As we do yeah, see Shurenfire... Oh, flash yep. in from Pretty Knockup as well. Shurenfire is able to get back, but look at the damage coming in from that bullet time. Top Spoon not going to be able to live. They turn it around. Not only do they get the dragon, but they get three kills and lose nobody. All right, I'll check that off on my Cloud9 Academy bingo card. Lose the early game and then come back through uh, mid-game fights. Bye, Keith. Bye-bye. Bye. Four kills. Four kills for Cloud9 Academy. They found the fight they needed uh, around the uh, dragon. Uh, well done by Shurnfire. Where's the five? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Unfortunately, no? no vampires in this game, but you know, currently sucking on the blood of blue buff is Copy. Gonna be able to good get save. that. That was good not save. really a good one, honestly. I'm not proud of that one. Little, little forced, if ever there was one. But you yeah, do a, see- A bit, but it's better than where I thought you were going. No. Uh, but vampires, scary. Also scary is Shurnfire right now, who, although having a very shaky early game, was able to find a great ult to Chrono Break coming in clutch against the focus from Immortals Academy. 
surviving, thriving, and not yet diving, but hopefully soon he'll be able to. Now that he's got actually something other than just the rocket belt. But it's going to be the Rift Herald secured again by Immortals Academy. So even though they did lose that fight, pretty much a clean sweep coming in from Cloud9 Academy. They are at least able to hold their own on this top half of the map. With the turret gone, they're able to get themselves to the Rift Herald. But let's take a look at this play and what went so disastrous. It looked like it was strong at first. Honestly, it's the CC combo just being a little off from Immortals Academy. You saw Shurnfire get just the moment that he needed, and also it was a little late coming in from the top side. Tapoon, I thought, was going to have the Hextech ultimatum earlier, but unfortunately came in a little late. Yeah, and then Keithier, just a delayed death for him. He's like, I want to be able to get away, but he knew that the Crocodile was on the other side. It's like that one video where you see the Warthog. He's, he's trying to fight off against the hyenas. And behind him, yep. there's the crocodile that drags him in, and he didn't even realize it. There's always a bigger fish, Magical. Crocodiles are not fish. They're they're, they're in the water, reptiles. Magical. If, reptiles. if it's in the water, it's a fish. Duh. That's Everyone knows that. That's not how it works, Sam. Uh, I, I hate to tell you right now, and it doesn't seem like it's going to work too much on Joey either. He doesn't really take too much damage. The King, though. King is the one who does a lot of damage with the bull time, too. Oh, all right, I eat my words there. It's Keith. Trying to be able to get away. Potluck on the other side. Scaring them off. Said it's going to be the tier 1 turret mid. That might be the priority coming in from Cloud9 Academy. Copy joining in as well. Just to be able to threaten. They don't want to have a re-engage coming in from Immortals. Where they, they're able to catch them off guard. And this is just what Shurnfire was waiting for. He has all the items that he needs. And that he has the Proto Belt and the Sork Shoots. But, you know, once you hit 6 as Echo. You're going to be doing a lot of damage. And at level 11, that's even more. He doesn't have to worry about dying. He has Isles to back him up at any given point, And he has the damage coming in from King, who has gotten monstrously far ahead at this point. 2-0-3 oh, on this misfortune that he can just do whatever he wants. All right, Sam, I have to hit my quota really quick. So, what up? Omewrecker is the best item in the game. Okay. Um, it's Magical. got 100% win rate. Um, Stop. It's on every turret. It's great. Um, all right, there we go. I think I hit the quota. And yet again, a sigh of... Unfathomable regret comes in from Color Caster as the Rift Herald is popped. Keith going to be able to push this one on. You can see Joey kind of moving forward, but Cloud9 are not letting this go down. They keep the no. turret up and they do take wow. down Rift Herald. Yeah, it gets a lot of damage onto that tier one, but not going to be able to take it down and demolish it. Instead, they have to back out of that one, which means a lot of gold potential for the side of Immortals Academy wasn't capitalized on. You can see that in the gold difference between the two teams. Where it was neck and neck up until that last fight. Now, it's cracked open wide, 4,500 that separates them now. And this may very well be what allows Cloud9 Academy to continue pushing leads. As long as they keep taking fights at this stage in the game, I have to imagine the Wombo coming out of Immortals Academy isn't going to be enough to stop them. Potluck isn't far enough ahead. He has the Leandre, sure, but that's not going to be enough with zero stacks on the Dark Seal to really give any member of Cloud9 Academy trouble. You know, I'm trying so hard not to say how much of a missed opportunity it was to not make Omrecker a mythic item, but I'm saying it anyways. Are you seriously on about that? Are we, are we still doing this? Years later, Magical, we're still doing this. It will never end. I will keep All it right. alive. Great. Like turrets Super. do, because it's on Excited. every turret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. You're right about that, Magical. You know what? I could be right. What is it? A broken clock's right twice a day. Unless the clock is written in, you know, numbers that are not 1 through 12, and then what is that clock on about? I mean, it has to exceed four, uh, 24, because that it, technically it could still work. It just yeah. depends on the time. But then it'd only yeah, be right once a day. Because right now, with another dragon spawning up Cloud9 Academy, inside track easily on that, since Potluck and Freddy were trying to play around that tier 2 top side. Unfortunately, it just wasn't the play to be made at the moment. The current objective to deny that soul point potential out of Cloud9 would have been a lot more important. I always like having three dragons as opposed to the four. The three makes it so now you are set up where mortals are always going to be forced now to try to answer those dragons. They're always going to have to be in a position to try to deny that to you, which means one simple mistake, Cloud9 Academy can rip this game open and off that play, possibly even end. And that's the thing, Magical, is that with three dragons, you have the Baron play now available to you. You can see Immortals Academy already prepared for that. The top side of the map completely flushed with wards. You can see three control wards just around that riverside. You can see on their side that's of the jungle. Of blue. Pretty darn blue. As ever lit up as it possibly could be. It's almost Christmas, Magical. It's just what? another 11 months away. Uh, 
I'm... What is your concept of time? I don't know, man. It's It's been a weird day. You know how it is. You talk about Omewrecker and suddenly I just lose my mind. You know, I feel like that's a, that's a normal... That's a normal reaction to, to me in general. Yeah. Yeah. As right now, Cloud9 Academy trying to see if they can wrestle some of that vision away. That That's more Christmas, too. It's also, you said blue when it should be red for Christmas because red and green. So I, I just doubly baffled by that statement. With both these turrets pretty low mid lane, yet neither of them have been demolished just yet. I can imagine that just with one simple push coming in from King, it's only Joey here to defend. Sure, you got Keith in the wings being able to show up, but all they have to do is sneeze on this and that turret's gonna fall. And sneeze they do as the engage oh, begins. Keith, 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 flashed away. Gold card followed up by the wild cards. Joey knocked up two by Isles, pulled back in. The spear as well as Echo taking him down. That turret was undefensible. Nothing you could do there. And without the mid lane, without the bot lane, looks like Cloud9 wanted to be able to make that play around there. And they're going to start it up, just making sure that after that pick, they get the vision down, and they also get the teleport in from Darshan, making sure this is all the way secured. You can see Potluck on the backside, pretty in top boom, trying Topoon. to fight this a 3v5. Here's wall. Copy's been split away. Look at the flash coming in from Darshan over on the other side. The ultimatum to lock in top boon. He tried to survive, had the shield, but he dies. Turn fire, the one to be able to get the kill as they're trying to chase away both Pretty and Potluck. TP still threatening this. Cloud9 Academy, now that they're kind of low, don't want to be able to just bounce back onto the Baron. Instead, they're going to go for the recalls. They're sacrificing that tier one mid. And this was actually a very good defense coming out of Immortals Academy. Yes, they had to sacrifice Tapoon to do it, but they stopped the Baron when they only had three members alive. That's an incredible victory in my book, and now they're going to be able to re-get their wards. They're able to get the vision that they need, and maybe even set up around this bot side where Dragon's going to be spawning up in about two minutes. And I mentioned Immortals Academy have to stop. They cannot let that go without a fight, because if they give up this Infernal Soul to Cloud9 Academy, well, yes, not necessarily the end of the game, it is a massive swing of potential for Cloud9, where they're going to have even that much more damage on a composition that already is bursting them and ripping them apart as is. And looking back at this replay real quick, as you talked about Magical, the tower was low. Joey and Keith really ambitious to be defending this at all. The fact that they only lost their lives and not any others was incredible to me because this was just a complete... Uh, jumped on opportunity coming out of Cloud9 Academy. And eventually it did end up costing Talpoon his life when they tried to defend around the Baron. Sure, they did deny the Baron, but as, as you're saying, it's like they really just shouldn't have been there. They should have read the play. That was one of those turrets that when you see how low it is and you see the potential dive composition that can come in from Cloud9 Academy, you back out of it. You sacrifice it. You give it up for free because there's not much you can do or you could have even used Joey's ult just to clear the wave, just to be able to push them. Oftentimes you'll see Maokai's do that simply for the fact to delay the inevitable. And honestly, this bot line coming out of Keith and Joey hasn't been effective at all. You just saw too much pressure coming out of mm -hmm. King and Isles, even with the rotations from Joey. I feel like this might have been a miscalculation in the draft, or maybe it was just something they're not comfortable with. And you can see that with the Immortals Academy, we mentioned before, they normally play so heavily around this bottom half of the map, around Keith, around Joey. It seems like it's just not working out for them. It's Joey himself getting caught out, has to go gold and be able to survive. Pretty he wants to be able to disengage, wants to be able to help out, but his killing spree coming in from King as Topoon not going to be able to help out Pretty. Ooh, sure, pretty. they do get the kill on Isles, but he trades his life and a double kill over to King. Four against three. Copy on the other side. Gold card on. Oh, no. Topoon wasn't able to stop him. Triple kill coming in from King as they continue to chase. Gold card again. It's going to be the lockdown and a quadra kill for King. And Cloud9 Academy show exactly why they love this pick for Copy. Twisted Fate just able to get into the back line and clean up the rest of the fight. It started out with this catch out onto Joey, who again, shouldn't have been as far up as he was with Pretty backing up. Yes, there was the hero's entrance, but you don't want to use that on your support Maokai. He just lost too much health too early, and from there, Cloud9 Academy had the positioning, they had the damage to take out all the targets that were in front of them. And if you look at the cooldowns too, Heroic Entrance still wasn't off cooldown. It got used immediately there to try to be able to get away, yep. but it was just too early. Joey needed to back out of that one well sooner, and it just leads to pretty much a cleanup for Cloud9. And this is just what you need to worry about against this Cloud9 Academy squad. Quadra kill for King. 
as we didn't point out in the cast, but you know what? It's pretty scary. You gotta worry about this guy. Every time you see King on an AD carry, every time he carries on an AD carry, it's always because he has the backup of his team and because what? these mid-game fights. What just happened? Magic. What was that? There's a magic trick. Uh, yep, an ADC just disappeared. I don't well, know what you want me to say, Sam. I, I it, that, that's the best explanation I got for you. Uh, unfortunately, Keith has been caught out. We'll go down, and Cloud9 Academy just start the Baron, take the Baron, and the Baron is theirs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. These are facts. These are facts. And now, with that, Cloud9 Academy in a great position. 10,000 gold lead over Immortals Academy. You can even see Tapoon pretty. Where are they? What, what are they doing? They gotta get back home to be able to defend the turret, and sure, they trade one for one, but they're gonna be knocking on this inhibitor soon. It's looking like they're just gonna push it straight forward. That's not gonna live for very long against King, who takes it down, and Joey, pretty, once again in the oh, crossfire. nice body block by Shurnfire. They get pretty, and they have a bullet time into the back line. Try to see if they can take down Joey. Double kill again, coming in from King. Gold card underneath the turret, ultimatum going to be able to do much. Maybe the gold is going to be able to help a little bit more. King is the one taking the turret. They're going to be able to take both of them. He goes gold oh, to be no. able to survive. It's an ace. That is going to be the game for Cloud9 Academy. They got the minions. They got the Baron. And they have the victory. Immortals Academy, they had a reasonable early game. Yes, they lost a couple of kills on that top play, but unfortunately, Cloud9 Academy just come back swinging. They get the mid game. They get the objectives they need. They don't take the Baron the first time they try it, but you know, try, try again. You'll eventually get there. Very well played, bud. Very well played as they're delaying the game, delaying the inevitable, but we already knew what was written on the walls. They go to five and one. They retain a top position in the leaderboard. The Immortals now go down to three and three, tied up with 100 Thieves Academy. This just looked like a much closer game at the start, Magical. You thought that the engage coming out of Immortals Academy would be enough to overwhelm the composition that Cloud9 Academy had drafted, but unfortunately, individual play is what separated it there. The fights up top, the fights down bot, the lead that King was able to get, it was all just too much for Immortals Academy to overcome. And uh, this is, like I said, it was a stark difference from Immortals Academy, who normally play around that bottom half of the map. They try to see if they can help out Tapoon and Potluck instead, and they had a bit of a lead. Shurnfire was not having the best early game, but it was Dark Harvest Echo as opposed to the Electric Gear. And I mentioned early how he's not going to be able to do much damage in those early fights. But once he gets a little bit of gold income, once he gets a couple of kills, well, then you, you see the magic that he's able to perform with Keith disappearing. It was really that one dragon fight at around the 11 minute mark where Shurnfire just completely turned the game on its head. You thought he was behind the entire time. He kept getting dove. You kept seeing the mid plays coming out of the side of Immortals Academy. But unfortunately, there just wasn't enough in the tank to immediately burst him in that play. And from the triple kill that they got, or was it four kills that they got from that play, there was just nothing Immortals Academy could do. They were out of sorts. They lost the scaling battle and the leads that Cloud9 Academy had accrued were just too much to overcome. Completely agree with you, but for right now, we're going to toss to a break, and when we come back, we'll have another player interview presented by Verizon Wireless. So stick around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back in. We're ready here at Academy. We got a player interview all lined up and it's presented by Verizon Wireless. I'm Mad Magical, joined in by Cage of the Rage again, and we have our guest of Isles from Cloud9 Academy. Welcome in, welcome in. Congratulations on the victory there, you guys now at five and one. I want to ask you, because this is actually the first time I think we've seen you play Rel this split. Why do you think Rel is one, one of those champions that has been only slowly and more recently been cropping up as players are getting a little bit more like used to her and being able to bust her out more. Yeah, for sure. I think um, Rel is a champ that was pretty critically underplayed the first time people like saw or tried out the champ. But um, as people start to understand like better how her combos kind of work together, I think she has like a very versatile kit in the way that she can kind of go forward and backward, peel and engage very like consistently. And a CC, rather than being like stuns and being susceptible to like Merc Treads, is uh, more knockup based. So I think she's her scaling aspect is actually pretty good. Now I wanted to ask you about your synergy with the team. Now you have worked with King a lot in this season, but do you think that there's a synergy point at which you're going to max out? Or do you think that you're just going to go infinite with this guy? Do you think that this is the <sighs> lane that everyone's going to have to beat? Um, I think that him and I, I guess we actually um, lived together briefly last year when um, oh. when he was unable to play in uh, Split 2, but we didn't really play 
much together then. But I think I have a good understanding of how his personality works. And I think so far, I think we're still finding our footing. But I think as this, as we progress, I think we'll actually get a lot better. Right. And honestly, I even want to talk to you about that because you guys feel like you're going to get better. But you guys right now at 5-1, and one, there's still Team Liquid it's sitting at the top undefeated. How do you feel you guys compare to that team? Um, honestly, I think that when it comes to academy games, a lot of the time it is the better team that shows up on the day. But I think that you know, preparation, like our preparation, is going to be really important, and I think that we're definitely a match for them. I don't think there's any clear, like, one-sided like matchup to be expected. I think that the better team will definitely show on the day. And I'm glad you talk about preparation because I have a question for you, Isles. Now, in terms of preparation, you're stranded on an island with King. You also have Shurnfire there as well. If you three are just there, who's going to be setting up the raft? Who's going to be calling for help? And who's going to be making sure that you have all the food that you need? Um, honestly, I don't really know how to answer this question. <laughs> Fair enough. That was actually the right answer, so congratulations, Isles. I don't know if you can read it, just help me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Isles, for joining us for the interview. I appreciate your honesty, especially with his questions, because we can all know how he can be. But congratulations on your victory as well. Good luck thank for the you. rest of the split, and we're looking forward to see how you're going to be able to perform. Thank you. All right, and that was awesome of Niles, and a little less awesome of Sam for the interview there, presented by Verizon Wireless. And we're going to toss it to a break. When we come back, it's going to be TSM Academy up against CLG Academy. See how those two are going to be able to fight back and try to claw their way up the standings. So stick around.